welcome to the Mile High Scale Modeler channel. We have a lot to go over, a lot of cool stuff in this model car collection that I got, a lot of aftermarket things, accessories, you name it, I probably got it. So let's deep dive into this collection. So the first thing I'm going to go over is all the built-ups I got in this collection. This is the Ford Bronco 4x4 raised and lifted. It has the grill, and it also comes with three fender flares that are not glued as you can tell the first one right here is glued the ones are not around and a winch these actually came off of the kit um, but we'll come with the rest of the kit here really cool kit I like how it's raised I like the undercarriage undercarriage has a blue engine nicely detailed this is a box box stock build Here's the seats, pretty cool looking. And for the hood, simple box dock. Really cool truck, it's definitely cool to get this. When I was looking at the collection, the guy did not inform anyone on Marketplace where I got it from here locally in Colorado that he had plenty of other items in the collection that was not notified. And a lot of his built ups were actually going in the collection as well. So when I got there, I saw a lot more stuff than I was anticipating, which is really cool. Let's get on to the next model. Here we have a Ford Galaxy, I believe. If I'm incorrect on the model, please put it in the comments below if it's a, if it's not a Galaxy. So this one is box stock. Nicely built. Definitely has a little issue on the glass there. The guy who owned all this collection I bought from did build for himself. He did not build for competition. Nicely detailed underneath. The trunk comes off, and you can see all of the the trunk itself. And for actually, this one is what uh, detail wired. It's pretty cool. And that's that one. Let's move on to the next. All right, next we have this purple charger. It is an RT. It looks to be a 68, if not mistaken, from the Ravel model kit. Um, could also be the AMT country version as well. So I'm not sure which one this is, but it looks pretty cool. So let's dig into it. So we have the body here. Definitely has seen better days. And it is all purple, so it's pretty cool. Looks to be the purplicious uh, one coat lacquer from to me from testers that was used. Nice overall. Interior has a wood steering wheel there. Black all the way around seats. And for the hood, box stock. Really cool having the heater hose in the small kit as a box stock. Lots of you don't see as well as the window washer fluid as well. Pretty cool. Let's, let's move on to the next one. Now this one's a really cool build. This is the Ravel 7D Camaro. I'm not sure if it's the Baldwin edition or not. I'm not sure um, because of the side pipes here if it actually is. But this one is really cool to see. The gentleman who owns this collection works at a body shop and I believe he painted or he has painters he works with paint um, a lot of these models for him in these automotive colors. This one is done in the Escalade pearl white color. It has a green hue if you look at it one way and a light pink hue the other. It is pretty cool. I believe it's on the Escalade and the, the truck version. But this one's actually a really cool one. Hopefully the camera can pick it up here the pearl essence of it. It's very, very nice. Underneath, nice and clean. He has some stickers on it. Definitely really cool. 
It does say motion here on the back, so I believe it is a ball in motion. Most of his windshields and stuff have problems, but still overall cool kit to see and to have built. And then here is the interior, or sorry, the, the engine bay. And for interior, he did black and silver. So something a little different. And that's the 7D Chevelle. Let's go on to the next one. Here we have the Del Rio built up. This one is box stock. The engine is not painted. It is yellow in color. It looks to be the Tamiya Camel yellow. One thing I love about these is the sleeper being separate and having that air tunnel to look at the air to go through uh, back and forth, which is really cool. This one does have the fifth wheel. However, I did take it off here as it does move back and forth. And I didn't want it to fall off here while I show the kit to you. So let's take a look at this one and see what it's all about. The underside here. The engine is box stock, not painted at all. Really cool build. This one, the only issue that I do see with it is this does um, hit the actual, the um, these parts up here, they're airs, I forget what they're actually called, but they hit there to push these in and then pop it out and it also hits the step up here. So that's something that I did see a problem with this one when I um, got it from the gentleman. So I'll be looking to fix this and make it to actually close this correctly. But other than that, a nice clean build. Um, nothing special about it. All box stock all the way around. Inside he did a white steering wheel and just black seats. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, here we have the 29 Male Roadster. This is the 2019-2020 release that came out recently. The gentleman was part of a model club here in Colorado that unfortunately disbanded in 2019 and 2020 due to the COVID, but he did still build for himself, and this was one of the ones that they built for a monthly meeting. And so this one was just build for whatever you want. So what he did is he actually made it a matte black, which is pretty cool. Copper paint for the frame. The wheels and tires are off of the, the gas or Corvette, I believe, or the flip nose Corvette. Everything else came from the kit. He did, I believe, um, add this blower. I'm not sure where he got that from. He did make the he did make the pipes uh, custom for himself, what he wanted. And the interior has copper wash in it to match the actual color that you see here on the actual seats with some black tones to it. Other than that, a basic build. Still really nice for what came in the kit and how he built it. And the drive shaft with the joints actually moves is pretty cool. So there's that one. Alright, here's a quick one. He made a a diorama with an actual engine. It looks to be a Hemi of some sort. Pretty cool looking. Alright, our seventh and last built up is this Bigfoot. It does have a shock that is off, so I will have to glue that back on there. But overall, this is a nice looking build. Another issue with the glass we see here. The one thing I wish that could occur is that this actually was actually able to come off this cover. Uh, the engine is in there, and it is box stock, but it is still nicely built. So I wish that was something that could be seen. We do have the tank in there which is red. We have the driver's seat as well. And then turning around you have the front. You can see the KC lights pretty cool up here it says KC. 
the other side, the back, and the overall underneath. Very cool. I've never actually built a monster truck and seeing all the parts that comes in this and the detail just in this kit alone is really cool. Um, even the exhaust back here. So that is the last of the built ups. We'll go into more stuff that I got from the collection. Alright, so we're going to get into the paint brushes, all the paints, all the tools, and the 3D printer, and then we're going to move on to more model kits and such. So here are the paint brushes I got. We have some really nice ones, a part of this that I got in the collection here. Some really cool paint brushes overall, as you can see. We even have some of the cheap tester ones in here. A lot of nice soft bristle brushes for uh, for, sti for stippling and other effects, even weathering. We have ones that are brand, brand new, haven't even been touched yet. And then we also have these ones that are super, super small and fine for detailing, which is really cool. So a lot of brushes here, definitely awesome to have and definitely a nice uh, thing to have for your tools. All right, so we also got some other random items as well in the collection. This gentleman was giving everything away. He was downsizing, no longer do modeling, was just gonna stay with RC, and he was selling his house to go uh, live in a camper and travel. So with that, he even gave me all of his tools and his supplies. So here we have a brand new bottle of Testers 3507 glue. We have the Squadron Products plastic weld. We have Tester's Tube Glue, Tamiya Acrylic X20, brand new bottle of Tester's Enamel and Brush Cleaner, always nice to have and good stuff. And then he also gave me pretty much two brand new bottles of Microsol and Microset. These are all great products to have in your arsenal to use for thinners, glues, painting, and also for decal solutions. All right, these are just a few of the rattle cans that I got. I got a lot of half used, a quarter used, three quarter used, you name it, however much was in the rattle can I probably got. I have over 50 of these rattle cans that I got. Here's just a few I wanted to go over with for a quick deep dive. So uh, flat red from Testers, enamel. Really cool to have the flat colors. Definitely enjoy seeing these ones. Can't go wrong with a brand new thing of Wet Look Clear from Testers. This is the white primer from Testers. Really cool to have some white primer. And also got a lacquer based gray primer as well. Here is the Model Master Enamel Turquoise Metallic. This is an enamel, so I will uh, decant this and then thin it with a ratio for lacquer thinner and use it through the airbrush. This will help these. This lasts a lot longer for paint for me. This is the color I haven't had and definitely want to use it. And from the looks of it, it looks like a really cool color. So I'm hoping it comes out just like this when I spray it. These are getting harder and harder to find these Model Master colors, whether it's enamel or lacquer thinner. So finding these brand new is always nice and obviously not having any of the lacquer um, coming out of it like some of them do when they bubble up. This will be a nice thing to have in my arsenal and to paint some nice cars with this one. The last one I want to talk about is Mallmaster Metalizer Lacquer. So I have about four to five of the actual airbrush bottles for each metalizer except for aluminum plate. Aluminum plate was the one I could not find anywhere and honestly I didn't know it existed because wherever I went it was never in stock anywhere, so I figured it wasn't something that even existed. Seeing it here and having this about three quarters full still will be really cool to see. I will definitely be using this and buffing it out for a lot of builds. Um, turbos, frames, a lot of things that require aluminum will be cool to have this on there. I'm going to decant this a little bit and thin it with lacquer thinner and see if it actually will still buff out and be airbrushed properly. If it will, then I will definitely be decanting all of this to help this last a lot longer for a lot more builds. Let's move on. Alright, so we're going to talk about the airbrushes here that I received. I received this Pache H airbrush. This is a, has a 0.5 
needle nozzle combo. And it also came with the 0.3 setup as well. I also got a one ounce, two ounce, and three ounce uh, siphon fed jars for both of these airbrushes and I got a multitude of these so about five or six of each which is really cool and a lot of them were brand new and never used and then we also got a VL which this one is a double action compared to the H which is just a single action this is the Pache H single action and this is the VL double action both siphon fed great airbrushes. I actually have two of the Pash JHs myself. They are workhorses. They're only 50 bucks brand new and they come with a 0.1, a 0.3, and a 0.5 needle nozzle combo. Super, super easy to clean. And the VL I've never actually owned. This is a cool one to have as it is a as it is a dual action. And this one does have the 0.3 needle nozzle combo in it. But it also comes with the the VLM.5 as well. And it has a whole bunch more items and stuff here. Even the siphon where you can just put paint in it and it just sucks it up if you don't have it into a jar. All right, let's move on. With this collection, I also got the Tamiya dual stands that come. So these ones have been used, but they're still really cool to have. And then also got this guy as well that you can use to hold your tools or, or sorry hold your your items that you're looking to paint at paint or also if you're soldering two things hold it so you can solder the points together definitely some cool items that came in this collection in this collection along with all the airbrush stuff including airbrush hoses that i'm not going to show on here as they're just airbrush hoses that fit the paches i also got this pache d 500 air compressor. Now I already do own an air compressor that has an actual tank reservoir that actually can hold air. This one does not. This one is a great thing to have as a backup. It is a 1 10th horsepower 3 amp 60 hertz. So it's also cool. I'm not sure I'm going to keep this one or not, but it's always great to have a backup just in case the one I have goes out with a warranty so I can get it on replaced and then use this in the meantime. This one does go up to, I believe, 60 PSI from what I can see on the gauge here. So cool to have another compressor just in case for backup. All right, so with all the airbrush stuff, I also got this paint booth. Now this one probably everyone has seen out there. It's a compact, it's compact, it opens up, it folds out. You can use it because the hose, a duck in the back. You can see right here exactly what it actually does. And also has an option to be dual. Right here we can see the actual model number all the information for it and the dimensions. This is something really cool. The biggest thing I like about this is how compact it is. You can use rattle cans, um, acrylics, solvent based paints, enamels, you name it, it'll take it. A lot of people I've spoken to that are, have owned these um, say great things about them. They are about 110 bucks new with free shipping on Amazon and eBay if you can find it. Power buttons up here along with a retractor for the the electrical cord. Electrical cord is actually right here and it actually pops out and you pull it out when you, how far you need it, use it, and then you're done, just retract it and it goes right back in there and sucks it in. And here's the part for behind it and it has a huge duct that comes out here and it goes to your window. So this was something cool to have that came in the collection as well. All right. So with this collection came a lot of automotive stuff along with it. With this guy working for an automotive detailer, um, auto body shop, they did everything under the sun at this location. He had a lot of stuff in the auto body industry that he used for his actual models. This is a 3M Platinum Plus finishing glaze. This is a two part. You have the glaze put in here plus a hardener on the side. I don't have the hardener here with me. It's behind me, but it does have a hardener. The gentleman uses this stuff on all of his cars that he had to do any Bondo glazing, putting on, as this stuff does not shrink. He said this is the automotive industry that does not shrink, so this is the stuff that he always used. It's about half full, so definitely give us a try and see how it does on plastic and styrene for our models. Another thing that he, get, he had is this actual air gun. Now, this is a touch-up gun I believe 
And this, he said that he put his 2K clear in here and cleared about two or three bodies at one time. And it did it nice. A few layers with no orange peel and it was good to go. You will see model kits here in a little bit that actually he painted the bodies and the parts that were body color. And everything else was intact and not touched. So it would be really cool to get those built here in the future. He also has automotive grade uh, wet sand. So these were actually... Um, so I have like a like velvet on the back where actually can stick to something and wet sand like a block. So he has these from 400 up to I believe 6,000. Here's a thousand, and these actually just rip apart right here. So really cool to have those. And then this I'm really excited about. It's not what's on the box here, but I do use these. This is a 3M Trizic. And this is their wet sand pads. I actually have a ton of these 3000s that I actually cut up in little small squares. These are great for wet sanding, uh, 3000 and higher. I have I have a ton of these, now I have even more. This is 3000. And this one he also has, which I have found hard to find, is the 5000. And then he also had the 8000. So it's really cool to get 8,000 and 5,000 pads now that I know are kind of hard to find, at least for me here at Lowe's. Probably easy for the guys in the auto industry if you actually are an auto body shop and you can buy directly from a vendor or, or a distributor that has these in stock, which is great. But going to your local Lowe's, Home Depot, or even your local you know, auto parts store, these are really hard to find. So I'm happy I got these in the actual collection and there's many more standing stuff here that I'm not going to show as it's all automotive one-to-one -one stuff but some of the stuff is cool to have that came in the collection. All right moving on I'm going to go through a lot of the aftermarket stuff that we got here now. In this collection came a whole bunch of rods. We got some 213 1 100 circle rod, 175 square rod, we got some 136 uh, rectangle or square rod as well. We even got stock tubing KNS and even more KNS stock tubing here as well. And then just some more uh, two square tube rod as well. Uh, this gentleman did have uh, bigger kits as well that you'll sh that you'll see here, and he actually wanted to extend some of them out the chassis and the frames, so that's why he got some of these bigger size tubing. We even got some plain. Uh, zero, uh, 30 thousandths, 9030 part number, some bare metal foil, real copper, aluminum mat, ultra bright chrome, and even some black chrome. So a lot of good stuff there. And then one of the also nice things that he did is there's a ton more in here. And here we have everything from HO scale. Let's see if it'll pull up here. Uh, there we go. HO scale stuff for louvers, which are actually ladders. People use them for louvers. That's what he's going to do with that. We got some more KNS rod in here. We've got tons and tons and tons of circle square rods. Uh, channels in here. L, L shape squares. Just, I mean, he almost bought at least one of everything that he could at the local hobby town here. Uh, he even has some that's called Drag Cage uh, 222, 223, 246, uh, 247, 241, more 241s, 224, 212, 225, uh, 227, just tons and tons of stuff. And up here we have all of our looks to be stuff that he got from Hobby Lobby. It's all clearanced out, but still a lot of great stuff here. So. I mean, this is just full of it. And we also have some brass rod tubing down here. Uh, I already showed you the out of the box, but this is all that you have in here. I mean, just tons and tons of stuff. Even, let's see here, what is this? Even some really, really big uh, circular tubing, 236. So this guy, he has bought everything that he could for scratch building. Um, even though all the builds I've shown so far were just pretty much block stock besides the wiring, he definitely looked like he was going to start getting into some scratch building here with everything that he had um, from the Evergreen Styrene and KNS tubing. 
it looks like everything here is something you could have gotten at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Sorry, not Michael's. It looks like everything here you could have gotten at Hobby Lobby or the local hobby town here that I've seen. But really cool to see the Plastruct HO, uh, or sorry, N scale styrene ladder. As he said, he's using them for louvers for a, a car. So really cool to see. So this is all the aftermarket tubing that we have. Let's go on and look at more aftermarket stuff. All right, so next we're gonna go through the rest of the aftermarket stuff. We'll start with some, this looks to be a Coyote engine in here. It's 3D printed, all one single piece. I believe this might be an Iceman collection and it does come with decals and it looks like what I've seen with Iceman, Iceman regarding how he prints his stuff out and how it comes shipped from other people. I've never bought anything from him before. This definitely looks like something that would come from him. Really, really cool engine detail and everything in this one. Also a uh, a bagged four-link suspension in here as well. So he was going to uh, bag a truck, I believe, or a, uh, a 55 Chevy maybe, but really cool. I'll definitely put this to good use in the future with these. Also, also parts by Park, pre-wire distributor, door hinges, wire looms, yellow distributor kit from Detail Master, black distributor kit from Detail Master, coolant hose, another yellow distributor kit, orange coolant hose, a red distributor kit, and engine bracket accessories. We also got a ton of stuff in here as well. And I'll show this. Uh, we got some some brass items in here, some uh, model car garage photo etch, uh, some uh, a good amount of Edward uh, seatbelts, just tons of seatbelts in here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some some scale model works, greedy uh, pipes in here for um, imports, some nail salon stuff for checkerboard looks like to be used for uh, hot rods rat rods even got some a whole bunch more of just detail master stuff in here a ton of stuff uh, a lot of future attraction stuff as well in here from zeus fasteners to bnm shifter uh, brackets um, everything on the sudden there a lot of wiring as well Uh, Ken's fuzzy dice. We got photo etch seat belts from Go for Racing. Uh, this looks to be all seat belt stuff in here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see more detail master stuff. Uh, tachometers, um, speaker grills, uh, street rod gauges, and the fuzzy dice. Just tons of stuff here, randomly bagged. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. I think he bought a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. So he's got some a whole bunch of braided, braided line from ProTech, Parts I Park, and Detail Masters. A whole bunch of braided line. All the sizes are in there. I did go through an inventory a lot of this. He even went through and had more ProTech stuff. So, uh, Charlie, if you're watching this, man, I definitely appreciate the ProTech stuff you gave me. Um, and I definitely stuff I bought. So it was really cool. And I got more stuff now, man, so I'll definitely be hitting you up for more anyways, but it's still always cool to have a nice selection of stuff. I mean, he had a whole bunch of braided lines, a lot of fuel, filters, everything under the sun from there. A lot of parts by park stuff. Uh, spun aluminum air cleaners. Let's see what else is in here. Uh, he has uh, pre, pre, uh, pretty much pre-wired he did himself. Just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, turn aluminum pulley systems for a whole bunch of different kind of cars. Um, detail master mud flaps. He, was in, he said he was going to use these for, dra for drag parts and stuff. So uh, a lot of cool stuff in here that he just got. A lot of pre-wired distributors, a lot of detail kits as well. So just everything in here was just awesome that I, that I was able to uh, attain from the guy. 
Let's see what else we got here. Um, a whole bunch of hood scoops, drag hood scoops. Just a whole bunch of them in here. Different kinds, different sizes. Let's see, oh, uh, moon tanks. That was out there separate. Um, some resin stuff as well, so some more resin uh, snorkel scoops. He's got two um, sets of uh, drag line footage here. He got a few uh, resin hoods and stuff, not sure those are from. And he also got these AN fittings. They're super, super small and to scale, and they're just black, 3D printed. It'd be cool to paint these all silver and then do some clear red and clear blue for that anodized look. But he got a ton of just everything. These are so cool. I don't know if he got these from uh, from J.R. Salvino's, the guy who actually sells them. I forget his name right now. Um, or I know there's a guy also that was on the NASCAR groups so that was selling this from Japan, so that's really cool. He even got, um, looks to be a Jana style blower scoop from VCG Resins by Reese. Reese is here local. He bought VCG Resins, um, I believe last year or so. Definitely a lot more new stuff coming the way on the website and what he's selling, so definitely check him out. Good stuff all the way around. I bought a few things and used them from him in the past. Really cool stuff. Um, even some little extra just parts here. So this is all just one that came with all this stuff in here. So let's go and look at the next one that came. All right, here is the next aftermarket tote. This is the last aftermarket tote. We haven't even gotten to the actual model kit yet and we have over 80 model kits to go through. So let's go through all this stuff here. This is the tire aftermarket tub. So in here we have drag racing tires. These are the dragster fronts. We have dragster slicks. Super, super nice and squishy dragster slicks. He actually got two pairs of these. Let's see what else we got. We got the drag fronts. We have two sets of these disc brakes. We also have a set of these. These are the pro stock ones. So a little bit um, wider for pro stock compared to the drags. You can see here there might be a you can see there's a little difference in the width of them there. Let's see what else. Um, a huge bag of just tires. They're all sets uh, two uh, sets of two or sets of four depending on what he had you know big slicks and stuff its own set. A huge set of drag wheels. Two piece ones to the ones from the coronets that are all treaded. Just a huge lot of drag slicks in here. And this is it just this is a huge, this is another lot of, uh, there's some 3D printed wheels in here and stuff, but a lot of wheels, uh, wheel combinations. So sets of two, sets of four, um, a whole bag of just center lines as well in here. So just tons and tons and tons of stuff, which is pretty cool. And then he also had some uh, aftermarket wheels for JDM cars, which is really cool. Definitely have a few of those to build up. Also got some tires as well, and then some rays. These are actually pretty cool that come from Hobby Design. They actually have metal uh, rings to them, and then you have the wheel itself. So some come like that, and others come to where they're just entirely resin all the way around. Uh, the wheels are really cool as well. The wheels actually come already painted in black. So I don't know if it's a black resin or painted black, but they are really cool, low profile, really nice stuff. I have a few boxes of these already, uh, different sets and different styles, but these are also cool to add to the collection as well. And then a whole bunch of Pegasus wheels here. Let's, sorry, let's get these out of here and go through them. Uh, so for Pegasus wheels, we have Big and Littles tees, so 21s and looks like to be 19s. We have another set of the 23s. We have a set of the chrome shoeys. We actually have two sets of the chrome shoeys. These ones that are unlabeled but are really cool. We also have this set right here, Fat Daddies. Then we have some Reverse. Some, just some tire pilots. Sovereigns, really cool. 
and then some more small 19 inch tees. And this is all the aftermarket stuff, and then we'll get on to other things. Thank you all for watching. Here are some teaser pictures for part two of this collection. I appreciate all of my subscribers and viewers. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I will see you all in part two of this collection.